You can't always get it right on the first try, or the second, or the fifth. But somehow, some way, good ideas for monster movies need to be done well. There are so many incredible ghouls and goblins and giants out there that have never been given the proper treatment, thus ending up as the butts of jokes and without a place in the Horror Hall of Fame. No more, I say. Too many great ideas fall flat thanks to lack of funding, studio intervention, proper technology existing at the time, and more. Plus, hindsight is 2020. If you make mistakes on the first outing, they can be dealt with more clearly 10 years down the line. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host Keegan Hughes and today we're going to be taking a look at the Top 5 Scary Horror Monster Movies That Need a Reboot. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more painful part 2s. Wicked! Let's get started. Coming in at number 5, we've got Chud. First of all, I think Chud gets more flack than it deserves. It's cheesy, it's campy, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's also a whole lot of fun. Where else would you go to find glowing sewer aliens and a bunch of people willing to give the acronym CHUD two meanings, huh? But as many movies from the mid-80s tend to do, it sort of faded into obscurity. There was a sequel, but we don't talk about that here. The movie itself was likely intended just to be a schlocky B-horror, but it did end up gaining quite the cult following. Well, it's even been featured in a few higher-end horror flicks. But the original did have a soul of its very own. In fact, that soul is probably what made so many people latch on in the first place. You all might know that CHUD stands for Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers, but there's also a second meaning. Contamination Hazard Urban Disposal. That's right, the government's been screwing everyone over from the start. See, the poor and destitute were living in the sewers to survive, and the folks over at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission decided it was time to drop off all of the byproducts beneath the city. One thing led to another, and now we've got plenty of monsters underground. Something tells me there's an updated story about not trusting the government that Chud could lend its name to. It wouldn't even have to be good or poignant, it could just be an updated look at how both definitions of Chud would exist in our modern world. Plus, I always felt that the Chuds themselves didn't get enough camera time. Sure, they were just dudes in rubber suits, but they were cool dudes in rubber suits. The reboot should happen just so we can get more Chud action on screen. Who's with me? Nobody? Coming in at number four, we've got the Tingler. But don't be alarmed, you can protect yourself. At any time you are conscious of a tingling sensation, you may obtain immediate relief by screaming. Don't be embarrassed about opening your mouth and letting rip with all you've got. Don't laugh. This is actually a very effective giant bug horror starring Vincent Price. Another camp cult classic, of course, The Tingler is the story of a parasite that feeds on fear. If you feel a tingle in your spine while frightened, you've probably got one. Just don't tell anyone. The story isn't all that compelling, I will admit. A doctor discovers a centipede-like creature that lives in every human's spine that can eventually crush you if you get too scared. The only way to weaken it is by screaming. A sample tingler is extracted during an autopsy, but surprise, surprise, it escapes. It ends up in a movie theater where in a moment of meta excellence, the audience is encouraged to scream in order to flush it out. This was all good fun, but there was an extra element included in the original screenings. Technology known as Percepto was built into the seats at certain theaters and would vibrate in tandem with on-screen action. I'm sure a few people were uh, awakened by this experience, and not just by fear if you know what I'm saying. This kind of campy goodness became a mainstay at theme parks and other similar attractions in the future, but definitely didn't stick in theaters proper. But I'm saying we could bring the Tingler back for some hilarious shenanigans. I see it happening in one of two ways. Either some theme park latches on and adds a tingler attraction, complete with 3D glasses and vibrating seats, or it becomes a horror movie social experiment type deal. Folks would go and see the new and improved tingler, likely unaware that there'd be anything in their seats, and voila, you've got a hit prank show on your hands. Something along the lines of that employment-seeking prank show with that kid from Stranger Things, but less overtly cruel to unemployed people. Coming in at number three, we've got The Relic. <laughs> If modern society needs to be reminded of anything, it's this. Don't drink strange soup. 
That's where the Relic reboot comes in. In the movie, Dr. John Whitney is transformed into a horrific beast after drinking an odd fungus concoction given him by some tribesmen. The creature, known as Cathaga, has all sorts of qualities from all sorts of animals. It's got tusks, it's got scales, it has wicked claws, it has a muscular tail, it's really cool. Plus, how many movies use a museum as the backdrop? It doesn't get done often enough, that's for sure. Watching a giant lizard thing run rampant in the Field Museum of Natural History is a blast and a half, so I think rebooting it is a no-brainer. Add in some more modern technology, explore a different museum, up the body count by a whole bunch, and maybe add a few monsters to the mix. It was based on a novel by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child, so returning to the source material and attempting to interpret it differently could be a fun time. Hell, they could even do a Night at the Museum style horror comedy. The possibilities are endless, kind of like the varieties of DNA in the monster. Coming in at number two, we've got Pumpkinhead. If we are talking about monsters that need to be reintroduced to a modern audience, then Pumpkinhead is an obvious pick. If Freddy, Jason, and Michael, and even Candyman can get reboots, why not Pumpkinhead? There's plenty of lore to explore already, what with the three sequels plus comic books, and a whole slew of spooky season enthusiasts who would just eat that right up. The theme of revenge is always an effective one, too, and translates well into our current media climate. Whether they totally remade the first or went in a new direction, I think Pumpkinhead would be a slam dunk. And who among us hasn't wished for a reimagined version of Haggis? Look, Terror Dome has already featured a polished and cleaned up version of Pumpkinhead. There's a demand for more horror icons amidst a sea of horror dramas and the sort of sanitized work of the Conjuring universe. Sometimes you just want to see a wicked monster go to town on some hoodlums. It would be cool if they took the Halloween route and retconned everything following the first. That way, someone in search of revenge could seek out Haggis and be led to the corpse of Harley. Bonus points if they bring back the necklace Billy made him. That way they could pay homage to the original, give diehard fans a nod, and then move in any which direction they like. Reboots are meant to freshen up the approach, so you don't want to get too attached to the past. And finally at number one, we've got Rawhead Rex. Seems that a lot of folks have had trouble adapting Clive Barker's work to the big screen. If you put Barker himself in charge, you'll often get favorable results, but if someone else steps in, you might be in trouble. That seemed to be the case with 1987's Rawhead Rex. Based on a short story by Barker, it was meant to be the tale of a pagan god wreaking havoc. Rawhead Rex is supposed to be a nine foot phallus with teeth. Ended up looking like a rubber gorilla murdering some people. It's not to say that the film didn't have some fun moments, but it definitely wasn't what anyone expected or wanted. In fact, Clive Barker himself has been vocal about his distaste for the movie. He was even involved in a remake at some point, but that was cancelled due to his involvement with a Hellraiser reboot. Although he does say he's still interested in directing a remake. So with that being said, let's focus our hopes and wishes on a Clive-approved Rawhead reboot. One with enough blood, gore, and depravity to upset mothers and moral authorities across the world. That's the kind of movie we need. Well, you excited? Me saying they should be rebooted doesn't mean that they will be, but I'm putting that kind of energy out into the world. The possibility of these reboots should be enough to launch you out of bed every morning, ready to work towards a world where Rawhead Rex can bite someone's head off in 4K and that chud will return to the vocabulary of everyone everywhere. I'd say it's possible. What do you think? Would you watch a reboot of any of these? Or should they be left well alone? Are you willing to pen a screenplay and pitch it to a major studio so the rest of us can enjoy one of these movies? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more buzzy ones from the top five scary monster horror movies that changed all the rules, part two. Tom Carr says, little aliens are afraid Ripley is under their bed. That's clever and all, but I don't know if aliens sleep in beds. More like they're afraid of her being behind every pipe, every valve. Wicked Good says, Keegan coming in with the quarantine Bob Ross look. Digging it. If only I knew how to paint well, then I can make some real money. Raina Moyer says, Tremors always made me feel uneasy since who knows what's under the ground. Even now, I wouldn't say I'm okay with it. You can never really know for sure, can you? The only way to confirm or deny it is to head underground yourself. Let us know what you find. Lancelot's word says, to be honest, I'd be more scared of having a little alien bursting his way out of my chest. Just the thought of it gives me a stomach ache. It's funny you say that. 
figured it would be like heartburn or some sort of chest pain. And the Johnny DeJanel Bernard says the reason why people think they're scary is because horror movies are a test to see what extent people could actually believe. We know they aren't real, but people would think they are real. And that's one of the reasons why people fear. That and the eel from Mario 64, anyone talk about that? We're taking advantage of an evolutionary instinct for entertainment's sake. Isn't that fun? And that eel gave me some nightmares that still pop up sometimes. That and the sea mine from Banjo Kazooie. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I lie down on the highway with a gray blanket over me, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more remade remedies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. No more, I say. <clears throat> Let's try that one again. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're gonna talk a little, little, little. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're gonna talk about the top five scary horror movie monster movies. Nope. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Oh, no. The reboot should happen just so we can have more mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. complete with 3D glasses and bribery. Blah, blah. Complete with. Woo! My teleprompter isn't keeping up with me. And that's all the time we have for today before I. <coughs>